What's good, everybody? It's your boy Brandon with Bama Fitness, and today's special guest is Rachel Katawar. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Can't complain. Living the life. Living the life. Being happy. Living the life. I love it. Living the life like it's golden. Living yes. Like it's golden. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for doing this. You're welcome. Thank you for joining. I'm glad that you accepted and you wanted to interview with me. I appreciate it. Thank Absolutely. You. Thank you. Thank you. So everyone that does not know Rachel Katawar, can you, um, you know, inter introduce yourself and you know, who you are? And Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm Rachel Katawar. I am from Memphis, Tennessee. I've uh, been in karate my whole life. My parents started a dojo in Greenville, Mississippi. I think we're at, at 55 years ago now. Mm. And so uh, it's been a family tradition my whole life. I did sit out for a fun 17 years and came back in adulthood. And now I'm enjoying training and teaching as well. And, um, and seeing, seeing what the competition life is gonna be as an adult now. Yeah, that's awesome. So like what style of karate were your parents into? Or are they into Shotokan? Shotokan. Yep. Awesome. yep, yep. My parents were actually um, for, for JKA members, they were one of Sensei Mikami's first satellite dojos when he first came here to the States. Awesome. Yeah. And what age did you start it at? On my fifth birthday, my mom made me wait. I wanted to get out on the floor sooner, but the rule was five years old for everybody. And so on my fifth birthday, I jumped out on the floor and I was ready. <laughs> That's awesome. That's good. I know you were super excited. Like, uh, so what age, you said you took a break for like 17 years. Yeah. Uh, what age did you stop at? I stopped at 14. Mm -hmm. And I came back at 31. Um, when I was coming up through it, my brother, he's, uh, he's, a, he's a good bit older than I am. He was in his heyday of competitions. So he was traveling the world and he was big into ISKF and AAU, WUCO, all of that, doing international competitions and just really, really killing it. And here I am bebopping along doing like little local competitions and state and, you know, and, and regional, national stuff like that. And, uh, and he he was the limelight he was the karate guy and for me i was more dance and gymnastics and so 14 years old cheerleading comes along and all that kind of stuff and i begged and begged can i please be you know do something else let jerry have this part and let me do it. and so my dad said uh win the junior olympics and you can quit and so I worked as hard as I could. I won the Junior Olympics and I quit for 14 years or 17 years from 14. And then I came back when I was 31. What made you want to come back into like training? You know, if I'm real honest, I, um, I, I began, co I cheered in college mm -hmm. and I was a gymnastics and cheer coach okay. and I loved it. So we had that competitive thing. We were going to nationals and I still, I still could do all of that. Um, but then I got too old to tumble. I got too old to compete in dancing and I still had that drive mm -hmm. and, uh, and I started having some health issues, went to the doctor and the doctor said, Hey, you can't stop mm -hmm. training in some way. You need to make sure you keep your heart healthy and you need to do something. And it just happened that that Friday when I was at the doctor, my parents were leaving to go back to their dojo and having the winter training camp with Sensei Mikami. And they said, hey, you know, why don't you come train for the weekend and just just to get active and try something new? And Brandon, I put on my same gi from when I was 14 years old. I'm talking, it was dingy yellow from the <laughs> attic. Moths had eaten holes in it. <laughs> my black belt was like the first one that was like cotton, no name, no nothing. Uh -huh. I got out there on that gym floor. And for anybody that's been to the Greenville YMCA, you know, that floor, it, it eats your feet. Mm -hmm. And by the time that weekend was over, I had bruises all up and down my arms, my legs, my feet had blisters. They were bleeding. And I said, this is my sport. Yeah, oh, this is it. I got that's it. it. That's awesome. And that gi, like, it still fit you? Or was it, like, tight? <laughs> It, well, it did still feel it. I was the same. I don't know how. I was the same size because I had kept up the gymnastics and the dance. But yeah, I was the same size. And uh, plus, gi sizes are funky anyway, yeah, you know. Yeah. And so, um, but I quickly got a new <laughs> new belt because the next weekend after that mm -hmm. was um, it's actually a funny story. Was Sensei Makami's? It was his All South tournament, 
And I said, oh, okay, I got to try it. I got to try it. And so I practiced Basa Dai. Mm -hmm. It was the only thing that I remembered. And I said, okay, so I practiced Basa Dai and somehow I tied for third place. I was like, damn, I got to do a different kata. I don't know any other katas. And so when they called me up, the only thing that came into my mind was Teki Shodan. <laughs> and so I'm competing in the women black belt division, mm -hmm. tied for third place, doing Teki Shodan. Needless to say, I lost. Yeah. But um, but yeah, that bug bit me fast. I was ready. That's that's crazy. Teki yeah. Shodan, like oh, first kata. Teki Shodan. Oh, it was so bad. My brother said he recorded it because he was laughing so hard. He said you looked like Elvis Presley. Your knees were shaking all over. The <laughs> oh, yeah. I bet. I'm just happy I remembered it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's funny. It's it's crazy you say that because um, that you remembered it because like I I I had you know knee issues and I had to stay out for a little bit of time, but karate once you're in it and you take some time off, mm -hmm. it sticks with you. You know, like it never you never you know like forget it. Basically, I, to me, I, like how I felt, like I didn't forget like anything. You know, like. Yeah. Just, that means you had I, I don't know how to explain it, but it's like a part of you, basically. It, it, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Well, that means you had a good sensei, too. That means that your sensei really drilled in those basics, which is what my dad did, too. We, our, our dojo was a full basketball court. We mm -hmm. were at the YMCA. And we would start on win, one end every single karate night. We'd start on one end, get on but I, and do every single basic the full length of the floor before we even got to do anything else. So so the basics, and you have amazing basics, so I'm sure you train the same way. <laughs> I try to have amazing basics. I'm, I really focus on Kihons a lot. When I train and like do seminars, a lot of the seminars, I can you go over Kihons. I'm like, gosh, you know, Kihons are important because they make up your yeah. kata. Um, but like I say to anybody, if your Kihons suck, your kata's gonna suck. So yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So always practice. Everyone practice your key hones. They are important. Repetition, yeah. repetition, repetition. Yes. In your eyes, do you think karate has like e evolved from like how it was back in the day to like now? Wow. You know, yes. <laughs> I think I can say that very, very profoundly because I was gone for so long. So mm -hmm. when I came back, the look was completely different. Um, how can I say that? The training methods were different. I, I, I like to think that within our little networks, uh, our dojos, we've tried our best to maintain the same level of training and pressure on the students. Mm -hmm. But it's different now. Parents don't let their kids sweat like they used to. Parents don't let their kids get in trouble like they used to and it's very difficult for instructors back in the day if we wanted to close the gym down and say hey parents aren't allowed in here then we could mm -hmm. if you know if the kids were late my parents were notorious that if kids were coming into class late the parents did the push-ups because the kids couldn't drive it wasn't their fault so if your kid's late you're doing the push-ups for them you know? crazy. so in that way the the gym life and the training life has definitely changed um, as far as the look and the feel of karate, I think that people now, and maybe it's just because I'm older, I feel like people now study it more mm -hmm. and they're more, they're more into the uh, physiology too of like how your body works and to make that faster, make the power go, make the technique stronger. And I love that. Yeah. I think that's the thing. I feel like before, and it could have been again, because I was a kid, that it was just, this is what you do and how you do it, now do it. Mm -hmm. Now I feel like there's a science behind it. Do you, so your family, you said had, had their own dojo, they had their, their business and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Do they still have it? Or are you taking it over? Okay, so uh, yes and no. Their dojo is still going. It's in Greenville, Mississippi, which is three hours away. And about okay. 20 years ago, we moved up here to Memphis. Okay. Um, they kept traveling down there for the dojo. And then over time, they handed it over to students. Now, one thing I do have to say about my parents, karate has always been a passion and a love for them, and they never charged. The YMCA would charge, um, and, and I'm, I'm gonna throw these numbers out because I think this is another thing that's really changed with karate. Mm -hmm. 
um, it was $35 a month for the first three months that my parents would make students pay. You mm -hmm. pay for three months, that $35. Once you take your first test and you commit to taking the first test, then it's free for the rest of your life. And so that's how they, yeah, because wow. it was at the YMCA, there was no overhead or anything like that. You know, they were able to do that. So they would have upwards uh, between, they always had between 100 and 200 students on the gym floor every night because people were able to do it. I think a lot of times now, unfortunately, because of overhead, we have to charge these higher rates and people who would really, really benefit from doing it aren't able to, you know? Mm -hmm. So I've kind of taken on their model here in Memphis. Um, I'm at the, uh, one of the YMCA's here locally, the YMCA charges, but I don't. Mm -hmm. So, but again, since quarantine, it's been closed for the past year, which is very difficult. Yeah. So with, I know with a lot of, you know, senseis, some have their own dojos. Some say, oh, you can't make a living off karate. Um, everyone has their own, you know, interpretation. Uh, right. Do you believe in that? Uh, if, if you have a regular job, are you doing karate on the side? Are you teaching full time? I am, no, no, no. I, I, I wish. I do know. I will say this. I know several senseis that are amazing, amazing senseis that this is what they do. Karate is their life. It's their job. It's their passion. And they're able to be successful at it. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it, uh, it depends a lot on the area and it depends on how long, you know, these people have been teaching for years and years. So they have a big name built up yeah. for me. Um, I've only been back for nine years. So um, I don't think that I would ever make it my job. I think for me, if I made it my job, I would love it less for me. Yeah. It's a hobby and I enjoy teaching it for passion from passion. So um, I'll, I'll continue to, to teach at the YMCA and continue to not charge on my end mm -hmm. so that I continue to love it. All right. So if karate was not in the picture for you, yes. what do you think would you, what would you be doing? What would I be doing? Oh my gosh. I would probably still be trying to coach gymnastics and cheerleading. Uh, I, I would definitely still be in that world. Um, anything competitive. And then also my son is huge into basketball and soccer, which are two sports I never played. So I probably at this point would have um, taken some courses and try to learn those sports and be one of his coaches. <laughs> or really? I'm that obnoxious mom on the sideline. If you can, if you've ever seen me on the sideline of him fighting at mm -hmm. tournaments, that translates perfectly to every other school event. So I would probably be following him around and trying to be active in some way, That's screaming. Cool. And so I, I just, I have to be screaming at something. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to be like that. I'm going to be that yeah. parent. I'm going to be that parent. Absolutely. It's so much fun. Yeah. It's fun. I can't wait. I can't yeah. wait. What would you, what would you say your biggest, your, your, your big list? Uh, what would you say your biggest accomplishment is? It doesn't have to be in karate. It could be anything. Oh, Wow. That, that is a tough one. You know, of course you got to say the, the obvious things, <laughs> my son, he's, uh, I would say, I'm going to stick with the karate answer for this one. I would say passing down, being able to pass down karate to him mm -hmm. and getting him excited about it and, and loving it. And then also, um, Making the U.S. team. I know that I shouldn't say that. I know it should be some big existential answer. But for me, that was like when I came back, I had my sights on it. I saw pictures of uh, for the Shota Cup. I saw pictures of our U.S. team. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I want to be in that next picture. And it was it was like two years away. And I again, I just remembered taking Shota on. And it was two years away for the next tryout. And I said, I, I want to be in that next picture. And I worked my butt off. I really did. I tried and everybody was telling me, you know, what are you doing? You're too old. You, you have, you've been gone too long. You look like a dancer. You don't look like a, and so I took all of that stuff, all that negative that I kept hearing and worked my butt off. And uh, thank God I've been on the team ever since and even made the AAU team. Mm 
Yeah. Um, back in 2018, I did that and awesome. traveled overseas with them. That was a lot of fun. Nowadays, with a lot of the w, uh, WKF competitions and just just different organizations, a lot of uh, athletes are either choosing kata or kumite to compete in. Um, when you go to competition, are you competing in both or are you just competing in one kata or kumite? How is that with you? I knew you were going to ask me this question. Everybody makes fun of me for this too. Okay. Um, when I came back and even still now, because it's just me and then I'm teaching, um, I have no way of training kumite. I have no way of training it. I do go down to Miami as much as possible um, and train down there, but it's not enough at my age and at the caliber that these women are fighting now for me to get a sense of timing, get a sense of speed, uh, work on different techniques. And, and, and it's changed a lot since I was 14, you know? And when I was younger, I was a very good fighter, I thought. You know, I did really well in tournaments. Yeah. Um, but since I've been back, I have yet to compete in Kumite because of uh, a lack of being able to practice it or train it. So I am, I am full kata. And I do catch a lot of hell over that um, because to what you said earlier, if your basics are good and your kata is good, then it, it transfers to fighting, then you're a good fighter. Yeah. But if you're a good fighter, it doesn't necessarily mean you're good at kata, right? So true. everybody says, oh, you're, you know, you have good basics, you have good, so you, you'll be good at fighting. Maybe, maybe not though, you know, maybe my timing will be all off and I'll be the one that's on the on the stretcher at <laughs> Take me, take me. I don't want to do that. You know, I got to go to work. I got to take my kids to school. I don't want to show up, you know. Um, but I will say this. If, if I have the opportunity, which I'm hoping after this pandemic, because this is really weighing heavy on a lot of goals that I had, um, mm -hmm. I, I really would like to go to Miami more, go to other dojos more and train more and get back into it. Cause I do miss it. Yeah. I enjoy um, doing it in class. Yeah. You know? it, so. Fighting, I, I love fighting. I when I was younger, I grew up just wanting to fight. I hated kata so much. Oh, God, I, hate, I hated it. This is so boring. Like it's just, uh, but I didn't understand what kata exactly what it was. Right. I just yeah. wanted to fight, 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 fight. Then you know, getting older, 18, 19, there's really no one our age, no, my age at that time to fight against. So I'm like, ah, so I focus on kata. I was yeah. like, I want to be the best in kata. So I just started kata, kata, kata. And yeah, just went from there. My kata is, I think it's okay. But, you have a very good kata. And I've seen you fight too. I know that your fighting is uh, like I, top. I love, I love fighting. I love fighting. But I, if I had to pick one, mm -hmm. it would be kata right now. Really? Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. Yeah. I'm so happy to hear that because everybody else, it seems around me is saying, you know, they pick, they would pick fighting over it and kind of, I said, well, I yeah. like the beautiful side of it. You, you, know? you would choose fight, you would choose kumite? No, 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 I choose, you, choose you know, there's a, there's a, an aspect too, I hate, some people are probably going to hate that I say this, there's an aspect too of theatrics to it. Of that makes it a lot of fun, you know, mm -hmm. you have to really love, I mean, I danced and did gymnastics my whole life. So we were always having recitals and stuff like that. And I love to be on the stage. Mm -hmm. So for me to get to go do kata and perform and do what's mine um, mm -hmm. is, is what I love doing a lot more than, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> fighting and, you know, the pressure of, of, Again, the timing, you know, just having the right timing or whatever. But um, yeah, I, I, I love kata. What is your favorite kata? Good Shio Show is my competition kata. Uh, Kankudai is my second, my backup kata. I love it. Um, but I'm really starting to get into Gankaku. I love that kata. I love um, Kanku Show. Mm -hmm. I am not an Ijishio fan. I have tried that kata over and over and over and it just doesn't in my mind it just does not make sense you know it's it's not for me yeah it's not for me i'm i'm unfortunately i'm not an empty person either um i like the more grounded gritty you know 
slow moving or deep stances or you know like your geongs and stuff like that so chin. So chin. yeah oh i love so chin. yes 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 my back leg likes to cave in a little too much so i gotta work on that <laughs> I took a photo the other day of me doing like a little like so chin movement. I looked at the photo, yeah. oh, back me, push it out. I'm like, do it. Oh yeah. 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 Cool. That's what we need to do a whole class just on how to open that hip flexor to mm -hmm. get that leg. You know, that's that's the kind of you know classes that we need to be doing. When do you think you would retire from competing? Never. 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 Um, the show to, uh, it's just, there's no, there's no reason to, you know, um, now when would I stop competing in the 18 division? You know, maybe 10 years, maybe when I'm 50. Um, I don't know, maybe even then I'd keep going, but I, I see all these competitions now that they're having in Japan, these, um, senior di divisions that are 70 and up. And I'm thinking, yes, yes. Why not? And they're amazing. They're so, because they never stop. And karate is ageless. As long as you don't stop, you can, you know, you can do whatever. For so sure. never, Brandon. No, awesome. That's, that's a good answer. Like, it's funny you say the, the, the 70 and up because I watched them and all I see is just like, it's like history and just like super knowledgeable, like senseis and like, man, like I wonder what he's thinking when they're doing, when he's, he or she is like doing their kata. Right. I just want to get in their minds and, but is he really thinking about like fighting right now? Like I'm whooping, boom, boom, boom. Right. Like, I just want to get in their minds and just experience what they're experiencing. That's what yes. I'm I want to be, I want to be at that age and be thinking something other than don't fall over. Yeah, right. You know, <laughs> oh, my you know? God. that's amazing to stay in that shape and, and to do, but that's just what you have to do. You just have to keep moving, you know? For sure. Um, who would you say inspires you? My brother. Brother? Yep. Wow. A thousand percent, my brother. And my mom. I have to say my mom. She is, she's a very, uh, I don't know if you've ever met my mom. She is, a, she started karate when, back in the 60s when it was just for men only. Mm -hmm. she uh competed against men she fought against men she has won many competitions against men uh she was on the u.s team she did aau team she did iskf she did all of it um but above that when you talk about knowledge she has this mentality of mind over matter for everything mm -hmm. she gets sick mind over matter, you know, um, she unfortunately got Corona in November mm. and my dad, she and my dad both did. My dad ended up in the hospital with pneumonia and my mom kept saying, I'm not sick. I'm not sick. I'm fine. I'm staying here. I'm waiting on them. Don't get near me because I've been around him, but, um, you know, I'm fine. Let's, let's concentrate on him. And so 20 days later, you know, fast forward, dad's home, he's better and everything. Um, I said, mom, how did you not catch it? She said, oh no, I had it. I had it, but I'm, you know, you, you can't, you can't let it get you. You can't let it take over your body. So she stayed moving. She walked every day. She, you know, drank Benadryl. That's her thing. And, um, and we kept saying, no, surely you didn't. There's no way. And you didn't tell any of us. There's no way. So we went to the doctor. She had the antibodies drawn, and sure enough, she had it. But but that's just who she is. Yeah. You know, she she has mastered her body. Not to say, you know, that everybody can do that with Corona. I don't mean, you know, that that's like a a cure. Yeah. But she is just that type of person, and I learn from her every day how to not let the world tear you down. You know, this is, this is your world. You control it. And that's what I'm learning from her. My brother inspires me all the time just because he's he's not only an amazing karateka, not only an amazing instructor, but he's a fantastic dad and family man and, and worker and just, he's a lot like my mom. So, yeah. That's good to have those people around you too all the time. Yeah, absolutely. How often do you work out? Every day. Every day? Are, are Every they, day. 
calisthenics? Are you working out with um, like dumbbells? Are you going like to the gym? What's your workout regimen like? So, yeah, I know, and I'm sure everybody's looking at me going, what? She doesn't look like she works out. She doesn't do it because I'm, I'm, I'm definitely not your, I don't look like your gym buff. But for me working out, it's any type of movement. So if I wake up, like for instance, today, today's Friday, I've worked out every day this week. I either went running mm -hmm. or I did weights. This is my home gym. It's a disaster right now. I have everything covered, but I have a pretty good set of, everything you need don't I do have kettlebells dumbbells um full barbells and presses so I do like to do the weights just for strength training a lot of days I'll just do stretching mm -hmm. you know uh balance training I like to do a lot of um thinking about the very center of your body inside all the way down that that kind of training to me is sometimes more powerful and strong than any weights you can do yeah so yeah. It's funny you say the stretching because just the other day when I seen you and um, Andres, Andres? Yeah, yeah, Andre, yeah. 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 I seen at the cardio at home, I'm like, all right, let me stretch a little bit. So it's probably when you guys, I'm like, it worked because I needed it. Because I'm like, I sometimes, you know, get lazy and I don't stretch as much as I should. Yeah. And it it's just very happened to pop too. up and I, I had to join. So. I'm so glad you did. Anyway, you got to see, and I'm sure you were probably feeling the same way he was. <laughs> uh, <laughs> those stretches. What's, what's your favorite music to listen to when you work out? Oh, wow. Okay. So I'm a Pandora fan and I turn it on either Tiesto station or Skrillex. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. I'm kind of, kind of old school. I like that house, you know, the 182 beats per minute kind of. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I sometimes listen to that. My favorite is r and I listen to R&B. So. Really? It's weird. But, yeah. Not hip hop, not like I'm, upbeat, but R&B. Most of the time I listen to R&B, but you know, sometimes if I'm like in that mood to listen to like hip hop, it's usually uh -huh. old school hip hop, like um, 90s, like um, Tripod, hey. Lost Boys, something like that. So, okay, I'm really I like- I'm not a huge fan of the hip hop nowadays. So, um, what do you do for self growth? Self growth. Oh, I like that. Um, I'm a very spiritual person. Mm -hmm. I, I spend time, probably not as much as I should, but I spend a lot of time like, uh, so I live on five acres here mm -hmm. and I try to spend a lot of time outside and just be in the moment. I try to, especially with like with my son, it's very easy. He's homeschooling because of quarantine. Yeah. And um, so it's a lot of time here in the house and, you know, you can get cabin fever. So I spend a lot of time trying to really soak up and enjoy each moment, mm -hmm. thinking about, you know, he's only going to be here for six more years and then he graduates and, you know, how long will this last that I'm able to stay home and not have to be going back into the office and joy. So I think right now during this pandemic it's just a lot of in the moment work and that's hard it's it's very difficult to take yourself out of looking at oh you know the doom and gloom and the bigger picture and what the hell is going to happen tomorrow and just say you know what today is today this is what i can do i'm going to stretch my body i'm going to work out i'm going to spend time with my son i'm going to eat right and just you know kind of for sure live, live in the moment and always give thanks to the man above of course yeah. Always. Yeah. Do you read a lot or no? You know, I don't because of uh, I read a lot on my phone. If that counts, <laughs> I um I do a lot of research. Okay. So so in that sense, yeah, I do. But as far as like just picking up a book and reading, I, I've really never been the type. Um, I am a very big Googler. If somebody asks me a question, I answer it, and they say no, you're wrong. I'm like, okay. I, I need to know why I want to know everything about this topic now. So I'll never be wrong again. <laughs> kind of thing. It's just a, it's maybe not such a good character trait, but. No, it's cool. yeah. it's still, learning. still learning. Still learning. Still learning. Yeah. Do you, so do you listen to any like podcasts out there? I have, um, I do audible. Okay. Um, I haven't really got into the podcast yet. I do audible. I like to listen to um, a lot of meditation stuff. 
I know that sounds boring, but I love to listen to meditate, not actually doing it, but just listening to it while I'm doing stuff around the house. Okay. Um, and, and different people's different views on self growth, you know, awesome. I always feel like I'm saying that backwards. Self. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, sometimes I add an F in there, like self growth. Like, oh. Self growth. That's exactly right. <laughs> Yeah. last question okay when i know you i know you traveled a lot around the world what mm -hmm. is your favorite place to travel to oh wow uh i've been blessed and been to tokyo twice tokyo is unbelievable yeah it's unbelievable i love it however uh for karate tokyo by far for life in general, Italy. I loved Rome. I loved the culture, the food, everything about it. And then of course, my mom being Italian and, and, and you know, kind of teaching that culture, it was cool to see firsthand. So. Awesome. I didn't ask you um, before, what rank are you? Ah, fourth Dan. Fourth Dan, nice. Yep, Yan Dan. Well, when are you gonna go for your next? I actually just tested in November. We had um, we had a very interesting camp mm -hmm. uh, in November in New Orleans with Sensei Mikami. Um, very spaced out. No, you know, we couldn't do any partner work, and everybody wore masks, and so that was very different. But it was a whole year since anybody had had any testing, and we really try to keep that going at least once a year. So. Uh, that was my test, and then now I have to wait four years for my next one. Mm, nice. Yeah. yeah, I love testing though. That's my favorite. We have we have the opportunity in JKA. We have the opportunity for um, judging instructors. I'm sure it's the same across the board, you know, for other organizations. But judging instructors and then your rank itself. So I try to test it for something at least every year. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. Oh, now. now if anyone wants to get in contact with you, what are the okay. social platforms that you have right now? Oh, I do them all. I love it. Especially, uh, we have been locked in since March. We don't leave the house, we, you know, hardly ever. We have stuff delivered here. And so, um, so social media is huge for me. I love to visit with anybody anytime. You can get in touch with me. And um, I love training online when people want to just get together and do a class. I'm all for it. So my Facebook is Rachel Karate and Fitness. Okay. My Instagram and and TikTok, I believe, is the same. It's Catawar K A T T A W A R and the number one Catawar one. Awesome, you heard it. If you guys want to train with Rachel Catawar, make sure you contact her. Oh. She'll be happy and delighted to work with you. I'll work. Kata. <laughs> Kata only. Kata only, guys. Kata only. That's right. Thank you. Thank you again for allowing me to, you know, interview you and you being on the Get to Know Me series. I appreciate that a lot. Thank you. Thank you for having me. This is a wonderful thing you're doing. It means a lot for us, too. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Everyone, hope you enjoyed. Stay tuned for the next episode. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.